Good afternoon, all my friends and family around the world. So I'm in Manila, and um, my eyes are good, but I've got some, basically some safety glasses so that I can remember this shot. I'm wearing these safety glasses for that purpose. There's an air conditioning unit over here that's making noise, so I'm gonna talk a little bit louder, and I hope you can hear me. This video is about food bars. Now, I met Ken Brailsport there in uh, Utah. You know who you are, Ken. We love you. We thank you for the ZJ Nation organization that you started. And I told you, and I told others there that worked for you, that I would be in touch with your staff regarding food bars. You see, I really love the idea of the food packets, meal packs for the children. That's great. You had water. But let's say you don't have water. Well, there was a problem back with thousands of people dead and thousands lingering, waiting to die because they didn't have money. Uh, I mean, sorry, they didn't have food. They didn't have money, they didn't have food, but they didn't have water. Meals came in for them, but they couldn't cook the rice. There was no water, there was no fire. In fact, all the roofs were gone, all houses were gone. So they, they literally starved to death because they didn't have anything to work with to prepare the food. Bread came in, but by the time the bread got distributed, it was too moldy, so it was thrown away. So I saw that. I was at the airport that was demolished, but there was some of the airport was still existing, which was a stainless steel railing, which I was looking at and I, that, and I thought, what if, if food was in that, it was compressed and it was compacted into bars and we could have them in little uh, bags, or let's say they were vacuum packed, sealed up and passed out. Not like a candy bar, but a food bar, something that has everything in it. So growing up, my father born in 1905, myself born in 69, Growing up, I learned the four basic food groups. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the truth. My father ate nothing but fruits, grains, nuts, and vegetables his entire life, 100 plus years. Myself, nearing 50 next year, I have never eaten anything but fruits, grains, nuts, and vegetables, okay? So we're vegans, yes, of course, but fruits, grains, nuts, and vegetables. So let's say we take those four basic food groups and we compress it into a bar, then you have something that will literally save your life. So. These stainless steel tubes come in 20 foot lengths. I couldn't wait to get to Manila so I could start working on it. I wanted it to fit in the back of the taxi car so I could haul it around, but I didn't know exactly how to build it. So I went down to a welding shop and I made this with, with uh, a little bit of help. My, my friend Rolf, he was there watching. He wasn't really helping, but you know, some local welders and some people. So 20 feet of stainless steel bar cut into to six lengths right here. Right here, one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, what is the big one right here? Well, I bought that because I wanted a food bar, or a, I'm, I'm sorry, a food log. These are food bars, these are food logs. The logs are for a family. Let's say you can make a food log that's uh, eight inches long or 12, but, you know, not too long, but proportionate to it so it doesn't break in half, and you compress that, that can feed a family. Okay, that can keep people alive. But a food bar that's one inch by two inches by three inches in length, is approximately one meal. Now it's compressed, so you have to have some water. I suggest about four ounces of water. I'm not a doctor, but I'm, I'm a rocket scientist, but I, I kind of figured that the, the food bar with four ounces of water, it's not too much water, but it's enough to expand it and fill your stomach really good. What are the four food groups? Fruits, grains, nuts, and vegetables. The fruits being, well, I used raisins or dates, okay? That was in one ingredient, that's the fruit. It's a dried fruit. Dates are high calories, they're sweet, They're delicious. Raisins are great, high in iron. Grains, which grains? Well, I use oats, rolled oats, or rice, brown rice, not white rice. Fruits, grains, nuts, what nuts? Well, coconut's great. It has the great fatty acids in there, but peanuts are also available and, and uh, not too expensive in poor countries. That's really a legume, but it's underground and it's a high protein, it's a high it's a fatty acid, it has high calories, and it's great. But not as good as coconut, in my opinion. Vegetables. Well, of course, moringa, malunga. What other vegetable do you think we would use? Or maybe sweet potato leaves, but no. Really, we're just trying to get a uh, readily available vegetable out there and put it in the food bar so you have your fruits, grains, nuts, and vegetables. Okay, so this is it. Right here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna explain this to you. It's gonna unfold and I'm gonna show you. We can do 90 bars with one pressing. 90 bars. Okay, let's say you're a sailor. I'm a sailor, are you a sailor? Okay, um, you're a sailor, you're headed on a trip. You know it's gonna take about one month to get there. You need 90 bars for one person. That's three meals a day, roughly. This machine makes 90 bars 
for one person. So one pressing with a six ton jack, hydraulic jack right here. Now, I've been gone a couple years, it's got rusty. It's probably never gonna be used again. That's why I'm making this video, because it's going to be put in a museum somewhere. What I'm hoping is that Ken, Ken Railsford there in, in Utah, wherever you're at, Ken, that you will help come up with a, a system, a way to make food bars, because they don't exist in the world. There's The ones that are there are a joke, literally. I, I put a team together with, with an expert who was 78 years old, 79, maybe he just turned 80 actually, and I hired him for six months to work on this, contacting every major distributor of food bars around the world, in every country, trying to find a food bar that is what I want, fruits, grains, nuts, and vegetables, and economical. You see, you could go over with an airplane, you could dump one of them in a, with a little parachute, or you wouldn't even need a parachute, you could just drop it, and it'd probably survive, because they're really hard. Then when you get them, you eat them, and you live, and you survive, okay? Well, you need water, but you don't need water to, to eat these. You don't have to have that four ounces of water. There's coconut uh, in this country. When the water is polluted, you can get coconuts and survive. So let's show you how this works. So this does 20 feet of bars, and how many feet is this? Three, three plus feet of log in one pressing. That's one month worth of meal for one person plus all of this log, which is much more, okay? So let's open this up like this. I'm gonna come on this side so you can see how it works. It's in a taxi car, and you have these things go like this. It's been a while. It actually has a locking mechanism, that I remember. So this locks in place right here. You see that? That locks in place. And I put, you need a longer cable to do this. But you can get the idea. Okay, now if my assistant camera person can see, see this right here? This locks in place. That's what that's for. Now things may have moved around a bit since I was gone. I'm not sure why that doesn't fit in there just perfect. It should. And this one here will fit right here like this. See that? Now this was all powder painted in a cream white. You see I put rubber legs on it right there like that. And uh, the way this works is you have, this is the uh, the handle, and as long as the video is still going, everything is going, right? Yes. Good job. I need to give my camera, my camera assistant here a kiss. She's my wife. Okay, good job, sweetheart. Okay, so then we have these things right here, and they, this goes like this, this goes like Work. Oh, yeah, this, that's right. You can use a shorter one. I, I designed all this, okay? I had to make some food bars, so we did this, and I went back home with a bunch of food bars, and it worked out great. Okay, so those go on like that. Those are your extension. This right here is the, uh, the cool thing. Now, I'm going to explain how this works. I'm not saying this is the best sort of design, but it's what I had to work with. I had a hydraulic jack. I had some pieces of metal and some tubing. Okay, so that's what I did. So this is stainless steel. I got some thick stainless steel. See how thick it is? And each one of these, I hand ground it to fit like a cylinder in here. Come around here and take a look. Take a look. So each one of these is custom ground down to fit in inside this. Now there's some um, stainless doesn't rust, but there's some some you know some debris or something like that. Probably since I uh, left, it's been several years. So I haven't fit those in those there right now, but basically these fit in there. And I'm going to show this right here how this connects into that, and this goes down here. Okay, you can see how that works, right? You got the jack over here. Are you able to see through my body? Why don't you go around here? You can get close up what I'm looking right here at. Right here, you see how this goes here? Get real close up to this. Super, super close if you don't mind. So this goes, and you have to adjust these. So as you jack it, you know, this gets up closer, so you need more. So you start out, you start out with one of them. And you jack, 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 and then you, you bring the jack back and then you add another extension 
And then I, I designed this so that it gets the whole length. Um, and so what you do is you jack, and then over here, come over here so you can see exactly what I'm doing here. And uh, now these are not stainless uh, things here, so I hope this comes up when it does. Okay. I might have to get hammer in a minute, I'm not sure. Basically, yeah, this is, I asked someone to clean this, but it didn't get done. I wanted to get this clean before I did the filming. That's okay, hold on a minute. someone to clean this but never got cleaned and I decided that I'm gonna make the video anyway. yeah anyway this is a stainless steel bar and I'm gonna get a video of this later and try to edit it in it's just sweetheart it's just um, it's not that's not the problem it's just this all this stuff that fell off the trees got down inside here there we go Okay, so this is a big stainless steel cutter. And the way this works is you have a mallet. It comes in here. Can you see the groove right here close by? You see this groove, how it rolls, comes up and down? This is just a safety feature so it doesn't come off. You know, it just locks it in place when you're traveling. But basically, this comes up like this, and this comes down like this. And you take a mallet, and that cuts the food bars off at three inches each. And then you take two people, so someone jacks and other food bars come out. Now, this is how I'm gonna conclude this video. There is a much easier way to do this. Now, this doesn't take electricity, obviously. This is a, a hydraulic system, but there is a much more efficient way to actually make these food bars. See, they're raw foods. You don't want to cook foods necessarily, but if you compress it good, you vacuum pack it, you put it in a plastic, we were able to get thousands of these little too big water baggies they're called just little water bags we just put the food bar in tie a knot it's good to go you just kind of you know, press the air out tie the knot it's ready to go and that's fine because it's but you could you could make some more sophisticated sort of packaging the thing is is this the best probably I'm just saying probably the best way to do it is to use a worm gear sort of system not hydraulic but a worm gear and electric motor we did have a, a tray sort of situation over here. The ingredients are put together, those four ingredients are put together and tumbled in something. I put them in a huge plastic thing where someone throws it around and stuff, but you can put it in basically like a cement mixer, a tumbling machine, something that mixes it. And then it goes into a tray which falls into this, this tubing, okay? But it could actually be just one tube, it could be or uh, vertical, for example. But the main thing is the size, four inch, or two inches by one inch by three inches, you can cut it off. And this is what happens. You have that worm gear, and you could have a shorter tube, okay, depending on how long the tube is, gives you the friction to make, you know, I mean, it kind of determines how, it's an engineering thing. You have to figure it out, how much power you need and how much length to give you the, the friction and the power to make it into the right, sort of bar which you can just bite and eat you know it's not gonna be too hard like a brick but hard enough that it's not gonna fall apart and crumble and then as that worm gear goes and you put the ingredients in funnels down it brings it out and it shoots it out in a chute one chute which then cuts it off one at a time and you can make more than three inches four inches whatever but it comes out a chute and one ch two ch three and then onto a belt something like that now we were trying to find a company that we could contract with that would actually make these because there's such a need. There's a need for ourselves, there's a need for the missionaries, there's a need for natural disasters. And so what we're going to do tomorrow is we're having a program on Kalapa TV with Ferds, the radio talk show host from the Philippines here. He just got back from Cambodia. We're going to have a talk with him about natural disasters and how they're increasing around the world, how we're 
in desperate need. You know, when we have to spend all of our time just trying to take care of our own needs, eat, and make sure we don't die ourselves, we don't have the energy and the time to help other people. If we're out there in the mission field, going around door to door, teaching the gospel, preaching the gospel, teaching people help, we need something to eat. And in this country, like many countries around the world, it's a big challenge. What do you eat? White rice and fish? I don't think so. Not if you want to live and be healthy. But sometimes that's the only thing that's available. Unless you have food bars with moringa, with a nut, with a grain, and with some sort of a fruit. This isn't too sweet, guys. Okay. One of the things that I found that I needed to do, and this wasn't a purely vegan, okay, if you're a vegan vegan with no honey. I'm a vegan, but I will sometimes have honey because we know that it's full of B vitamins and it's very, very healthy. I put some, I sprayed some raw honey because it helped stick it together and hold it together. That's not necessary. I mean, we can in, figure out something. This needs to be still fine-tuned down. So I thank you so much for joining me and my dear wife here. Oh, she has something on her face, one of those masks, you know, to keep her nose clean, or the, the dust and stuff out, so she's like, no, 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 don't want to take a picture, but anyway, thank you guys, you'll see my wife in many other videos, thank you for watching, this is the food bar machine, and I hope you enjoyed this video, I'm going to upload it, and I'm going to retire this machine, you can see the table is not upright, so that's why that's like that, but... It does, it does go on a long table and it has these nice legs on it. And you can see how it would work. It's not that big, but it gives 20 feet, 90 bars. And I'll tell you, last time I made bars with it, went into the province, into the country, the villages, it was wonderful because I felt like, I mean, I had energy. I didn't feel hungry. When you eat the local food that is, I mean, if you're into health and you can't eat the, the meats and the, and the sugars and the white flowers and the foods that are, you know, this bleached flour stuff, you really do feel sick. But with these food bars that I made, I didn't feel sick at all. So I'm so excited about this, but yet I'm, I'm the inventor. I'm the, the poor guy. You know, I used to have some money, but times have been hard lately when I dedicated my life to serving in the mission field and being uh, a missionary and just just helping people around the world um, not for not for I didn't get paid of course and, and I didn't have enough money to give them I gave what I could but it's not about giving money Mother Teresa didn't give money away she gave love she gave the human touch a compassion help people uh, with a, you know die in a more of a humane way she work with the poorest of the poor. Now, I'm not Catholic, but I love Catholic people, and I love, I love people that, that see a need to be more loving and kind and who don't want to live for themselves anymore. They have a, a burden and a passion to give everything they have. You know, life is so short. We just, we just, it makes so much sense to live for other people. But there's something I want to point out here. I was listening. I met Deepak Chopra, and I had a a lunch with him one time and Deepak Chopra if you ever watch this you know I understand I understand where you're coming